All right, welcome back everyone. Thank you for stopping by. I have a couple different things in mind for this video. I'm gonna be going over two different catfish rigs that uh, since I began catfishing last year have just really exceeded in the amount of hookups and landings of fish, okay? So uh, we're gonna be focusing on two, like I said. The first one I believe is your bread and butter. If you're new to catfishing, um, this is something you need to learn right away and uh, it'll be a, it, it's a very helpful rig to have and uh, a lot of folks use it to bass fish with as well. You may have heard of it. It's called the Carolina rig. All right, real simple. Um, it, there's not a lot of moving parts, but you can add additional items to the rig to make it more specific to whatever you're fishing, whether that be species or your environment. Maybe you're in a river, you're in a lake, creek, doesn't matter. This is a rig for you. You can adjust it to however you need. So let's get into this rig. Okay, so I have with me uh, a pole of mine. This is a Penn Level Wind 309. And then I got a ugly stick tiger rod. Um, I have 20 pound mono on this, okay? So uh, not, nothing too crazy. You can do this with any line, whether it's mono, braid, it doesn't really matter, okay? So first thing you're gonna need is uh, the correct size of sinker. Now I personally have really been enjoying the disc sinkers. These guys right here, all right? This is a three ounce disc sinker. And uh, I like these a lot, I started using them this year because when they are on the bottom, they don't roll. You know, sometimes they use these, say, these egg sinkers. This is a one ounce egg sinker, and it'll roll. If you have current, this will get drug across the bottom. These like to stick and hold their ground. So that's why I prefer these, especially when you're fishing in a river. Now, if you're in a lake or area with no current or little wind, these egg sinkers will get you by just fine. Because they are, these are easier to find, say if you go to any, like if you go to Walmart or any, any sporting goods store, anywhere that carries fishing equipment, these are easier to find than these disc sinkers. Okay, these cost a little bit more. Um, but I think it's worth the money. They've been very handy for me this year. So, uh, starting on the rig, you will need a sinker. The next thing, I think a lot of people skip on this, but I, I believe you absolutely need one, is a bead. And I use that to protect your knot, all right? Just, uh, you can get these at even just Walmart, and it's in like the bobber section. Uh, they're for slip bobbers, but they work just fine for this as well. Um, there are various other different types of beads and line stops and things like that that can protect your knot. I use beads, but whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Next thing you need is a swivel. All right, just a barrel swivel, two-sided barrel swivel. All right, nothing too crazy. So that's gonna be all you need to get started. All right, so we'll take our main line here. And uh, first things first is our sinker. Goes right through, bam, in. Next, bead in through the line, okay? slides down. Once you have that, all you have to do is tie on your swivel to the main line. All right, we'll switch down to this camera here for this. Swivel to your main line. Um, I use the uh, uh, improvised clinch knot, improved clinch knot, I should say. Um, I would use either the improved clinch knot, uni knot, or palomar knot, whichever is your favorite of those three, or if you prefer some other knot, as long as you know it's a good strong knot. It does help when you're tying it to this stronger line, 20 pounds and up. Uh, those knots or those lines really hold knots well so we'll go ahead and do it uh, this is how I do mine I'll pinch it right above where it goes to the loop on the barrel swivel pinch it and then I'll just run it through and over twist it um, not you know the thicker your line is the less you need to do that was like six or seven right there take that tag end you made that loop go through there pinch it and then you created this top loop Reach in with these two fingers, grab that tag line, pull tight on all ends. And once you have it tight on the tag end, just pull down away from the main line on the barrel swivel and away from the barrel swivel with your main line. And it'll cinch right down. Perfect. Pinch it tight, pull the tag end tight. It's good. Snip off the end. There, no mess. And that bead, as you can see, slides over the knot and it'll protect it from that sinker, okay? So that's what you're going for. So now we're gonna talk about uh, our leader line. I know a lot of saltwater guys will actually use leader line that is uh, weaker than their main line, and that is to protect if you get a snag or if you get bitten off by a shark, but we're not dealing with any of that. We're going for catfish. So I've, like I said, I have 20 pound main line. I'm gonna be using 40 pound uh, mono for my leader line. I like the stronger leader. It's tougher against abrasions. Um, and that's really the main reason. You know, if you run into rocks or logs or whatever it may be down there, you want to be able to have confidence in your line that even if it does get nicked up, you can get that fish out of there. And the worst case scenario, let's say you get it back and 
you know, your line's all tore up, but at least you got the fish in. You can always cut the line and re-rig the leader and keep this stuff just as safe. This stuff doesn't really see much damage unless you really get tangled up in a tree or something. So uh, let's go ahead and get this uh, leader line on there. Now, when it comes to length of leader line, it just varies. I usually say the standard start off with that 12 to 14 inches. Um, a lot of times when I tie my line on, I'll leave the line just attached to um, whatever you call this, the, the, the rest of the line. I'll leave it attached until I'm ready to cut it for my exact length. So we'll go back down to this camera here. And I use the exact same knot here. Um, same deal. So as you can see, main line to the swivel. And then here's my leader line right here going in. And exact same knot. All right. I do it better this way. Same exact knot. And since it's 40 pound line, I may do a few less uh, wraps around this. It doesn't really matter too much though. As long as that knot is nice and strong, that's what you want. All right. I think that was five. Through the bottom loop. Back up through this top loop. And we're pulling tight. Okay, so there you have main line, sinker, bead, swivel, down to leader line. Now we'll cut, I don't know, probably a little bit more than 14 inches because when you tie that knot, it'll cut back on your line a little bit. So we'll move this out of the way. Um, up next is very important, uh, arguably the most important part of the rig itself, uh, and that is hook selection and the knot you use on your hook. Now you might think this is all more important. This is very ideal. Um, you, you want strong knots, good strong line, you don't want weak line, um, but for hookup rates and fish staying hooked up after you've uh, set the hook on them, this is important, all right? So we're gonna use a bigger hook just so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. Um, let's go with this ADOT. This is an ADOT Team Cat double action hook. Um, I prefer these hooks, these uh, double actions from Team Catfish. I think they're great. They're a little bit thicker gauged. They're offset, um, real easy knot to tie. We're gonna be tying a Snell knot on the, these hooks. And um, I, I'm a big believer in the Snell knot. I don't know many people who don't run Snell knots on their catfish setups it just works out the best, in my opinion. Um, and you'll see why once a knot is tied. I'll probably do an example of one knot with a snell, just so you guys can kind of see the difference and why, why this knot does make a difference. Okay, so let me tie a quick snell knot. We'll go down to this camera and I'll show you how I do it. So you're gonna take the end of your leader line, right? Here's your swivel leader line. And this is important. You're gonna have this hook facing the line, all right? You're not gonna be coming in on the back side of it like this. You're gonna have it facing you this way, all right? And you're gonna give yourself, I don't know, this, this is a knot that takes a lot of practice. So uh, I, I give myself, what is that, three, maybe four inches of line through the loop. And I'll go down to right where it starts to J and I'll pin it with my thumb, right? So now this is what you're looking at, all right? Now I'll take this hand and I'll pull with my pinky, pull this line tight and I'll grab this tag with my finger and thumb and you're gonna loop it. And while you loop it, I, you've created a little loop down there where your thumb pinned the line in the first place. So with this heavier line, I'm already gonna give this maybe five loops. So there's one, two, three, four, and we'll do one more, five. Now, you have your loops around the line, take your tag end and go back down through that loop you made, okay? And then you're gonna pull both ends tight and then put your th uh, finger down at the bottom of the hook and pull it up. And that is your snelled circle hook. Now, I, I don't think I gave it enough loops. <clears throat> if this was a legit fishing trip, I probably would've given it a few more loops. That's not much, um, but it'll do for the sake of this video. Um, now, you can trim that tag end, but really, the tag end doesn't really matter too much. Um, but yeah, that's it. Now the big thing to notice is look how that <coughs> hook leans in. It leans up towards the line, okay? And that's what you're looking for because when that bait is in a fish's mouth and they're taken off with your bait, imagine this right here is a corner of a fish's mouth that gets in there. See how it grabs by itself? It just grabs that and that's exactly what you want because as that fish pulls or as you reel down on that fish, it'll just dig that hook in more and more into the corner of that fish's mouth. And that is what you're looking for with this knot. Okay, so that is a completed Carolina rig. All right, there's nothing, <clears throat> nothing better 
for catfishing the net rig right there. Now, if you're just, <clears throat> just getting started, this is the way to go, right here. And like I said, you can mix it up. Say you don't like team cat hooks or you can't find them. That's fine. Get whatever circle hooks you can get a hold of. Um, I prefer, like if you're going for a cheaper hook, uh, believe it or not, Walmart makes, or Eagle Claw, which is Walmart's brand, um, they make their version. I'm not sure what they're called, this Eagle Claw circle hooks, and they're great. They're a little bit thinner gauge. So if you're going for more smaller fish, this is a three aught, for example. Um, and I'll show you compared to a three aught team cat. Uh, here's a three aught team cat double action hook, right? And this is going to be uh, side by side with Walmart's uh, Eagle Claw. Okay, so very similar. Um, the Team Cat one does definitely have a wider gap, but for the most part, they're both going to get the job done when it comes to those smaller fish. Now, if you're upgrading to bigger fish, you're targeting, say, big blues, I would recommend spending the money on nicer hooks. In the long run, it will benefit you. Okay, so now we can kind of dive into the different things you can do to this particular rig. Okay, let me go grab my other setup right over here. And it also has a Carolina rig, but it has a few more things on it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, here's my other setup here. And uh, as you can see, still a Carolina rig. Get it untangled. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll compare these two setups right here. Um, this pole is, uh, let me see, I got an Ebu Garcia Ambassador uh, 6600. And this is a ugly stick catfish rod. This is one of their old ones when they used to make them one piece. So really solid setup. Um, 40 pound <clears throat> main line as opposed to this one with the 20. And then I have an 80 pound leader on this. Now you'll see the big difference here is I have the sinker slide on here as opposed to the sinker being directly onto the knot or onto the line. And that's just for added protection and ease of swapping sinkers. So let's say this three ounce isn't enough. I want like a four ounce or bigger or smaller. I can just clip this off, slide that off. Put a different one on, clip it back in, we're back in business, right? Still the bead, same swivel, same knots, everything else is the same. <clears throat> you also notice down here I have a peg float uh, near my hook, and that's it's, it does exactly what it looks like. The sinker will keep that bait, or uh, keep the setup on the bottom, but this peg float will float that bait up however long. This is about 16 inches long, up off the bottom, okay? And that's what I'm looking for. It gets this right in these fish's face. Also, there's a little color in there. If the water has some clarity, um, but that's what I'm saying is you can add a lot to this. Every single setup that you see, whether you're bottom fishing, whether you're bouncing, whether you're trolling, drifting, they all are going to be based off of this setup. Now you can get <clears throat> a lot of guys when they troll and drift and drag baits on the bottom, you'll see these big, long, like foot, foot and a half long sinkers, and that's because they're dragging. So their bait's staying up, you know, way off the bottom. Um, you know, you, every setup, just about every setup is based off of the basic Carolina rig, which is the first thing I tied here. All right, super simple, and uh, there's not much to it, but it, it yields you so many more fish. And uh, the biggest thing, like I said, is having that knot, uh, the snell knot to the circle hook. Now, like I said, <clears throat> go down to this camera. You want to keep an eye on making sure that hook looks like it's tilted up. It does look funny, but that's what it's supposed to look like. Let me give you an example of what this hook should not look like. Now, if you were, say, <clears throat> you think, oh, I don't need this now, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tie it, say I'm gonna use the same knot that I was using before, the uh, improved, uh, whatever the hell it's called. Um, what the hell is that knot called? Improved, I don't know, whatever. Let's say we're gonna use the original knot that I'm tying these with, okay? So, tie it in, a couple twists, <clears throat> down through this loop, and back up this way, and bam. What's the first thing you notice there? That hook is not tilted up at all. All right, before with the snell, your hook's sitting like that towards the line. It'd be like if the line was sitting like this, and that's what you want, okay? But as soon as you put any tension on this hook, it straightens out, and uh, that tip isn't gonna be forced forward as much into the corner of that fish's mouth, okay? So why you miss a lot of fish like this. Let's say again, this is a fish, the corner of the fish's mouth is, say, example, my hand. This knot goes in and it doesn't grab. It really doesn't because that tip is bent against it, okay? It'll just bounce right off. Now you will still get hookups like this, um, but good ones are harder to come by, okay? So uh, that's gonna be the biggest thing. The difference between really locking in that hook into a fish's jaw versus just, say, whisker hooking them, that's your difference. 
And uh, you may think, well, it's not that, you know, it's not going to change that much. Let's just say, for example, let's say on average this maybe helps you catch two more fish per trip, just in general. Well, <clears throat> that can be the difference between you missing two fish compared to you catching your new PB blue, right? Why not tie it just to be safe, okay? So that's the way I see it since I've learned that. It's the only knot I've tied onto these circle hooks. It's the way to go. <clears throat> Okay, now we're going to get into the second um, rig that I like to run. And uh, this one, it's not as, I would say, necessary, but it's a lot of fun to use. And I think it, it does help. Um, it does have its benefits as opposed to its downsides. This one, as opposed to the Carolina rig, I don't see really any downside to the Carolina rig. There are a couple downsides to this one. But it can be fun when used in the right scenario. And that is called the double hook rig. Okay, there's a couple different names for it. There's a double hook rig high low rig and i think the kentucky rig is another name for it i could be wrong let me know in the comments what you guys call it or if that's wrong um but uh, we're going to start with some heavier line uh, i'm just going to run this 40 pound it's easy to see real bright so we'll use that um would recommend using heavier line i'd say at least 30 and up got to be mono um, i use 40 for my smaller rigs and then when i'm casting like my surf rod for bigger fish i have one made here with 80 pound uh, mono and uh it just really depends on the scenario, size of fish you're targeting, you know, size of sinker and weights you're going to be using. But we'll get into all that later. Let's start with this rig. So, um, you know, make this rig as long as you want. I like to start with it longer and then trim it down as I need to. It's a lot easier to do that as opposed to making it too small and then you're just going to have to restart. Okay. So make it long. I would sit. I don't know what is this like four foot, three and a half foot. We'll just start with that. Um, and I'm going to keep the line attached just in case I do need more. So you're going to start on the bottom of this line, okay? So there's my end. Maybe give it, oh, I don't know, five, six inches. I'll do with this camera down here. Give it five, six inches from the end. Loop it, okay? So you're going to make this loop, and that's all it is. You're going to tie an overhand knot with this loop. Okay, so make it small. Reach through. And bam, there's one. There's your overhand knot. And you can double this up. A lot of folks will double this up. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it's necessary, but you can do it. Um, so we'll trim this off right here. Okay, so there's the base of your knot, all right? It does get a little tricky after this, and it did take me a while to learn how to tie this, and really it just takes practice. Go out in your garage or wherever you set up your rigs and just practice this knot. It is a little bit tricky to do. Um, I'm going to do my best to show you on camera, um, but like I said, it's not very simple. So start, I don't know, maybe six or so inches above where your tag end is on the bottom. All right, where you, this is where your sinker is going to go, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. This is where you would tie your sinker. So this is the bottom of the rig. This rig's going to sit up and down. Um, so start six or seven inches above your line, above where this bottom knot is, and uh, you're going to make a loop and make feed your line from the... Uh, the rest of the line. Don't feed it from this side, otherwise you're going to end up with this bottom hook being right on the bottom. All right. So feed your line in from the uh, rest of the line, and you're going to want to make a loop that's about the size of maybe a little bigger than like a baseball, maybe like a softball size loop. See how I did that there? All right. So that's all it is. It's just crossed. All right. So here's where it does get tricky. And I'm going to have to show you on this front camera because. I have to hold it out, and I don't think I can do that with this other setup over here. So, you have your line looped, and you make this little cross. Here's the rest of the line, and here's the bottom of the line here. All right, so, get it set up. You're going to pinch the sides down, all right, so this can't twist on you. And then you're going to make this open, leave an opening here. From there, you're going to twist. One, two, three, four, five six is probably good all right so we have twists on each end see the twists now you're going to have this opening here in the middle you're going to wet these all right this is your spit do the other side and that's just to make sure you're not slides easy your line doesn't burn or get chipped up so with that opening there you're going to take this bottom line the bottom of your loop down here put it through there and since you don't have any extra hands use your teeth and you don't want to chip your line, so use your tongue, wrap your tongue around this loop. And you see how these pull tight? Bam. And then you just pull each end tight. Now you have your bottom loop for your sinker, 
and then about, that's probably a little less than six inches, maybe four or five inches above, you have this first loop. So you're, you would do the same up higher as long as you want, um, but for the sake of making this a quick video, we'll just do one for right now. Um, so you'll choose your hook size. So let's say you want a, oh, I don't know, a four-aught. This is a little four-aught hook right here. Um, all you're gonna do is pinch this line tight so it makes a tiny little baby loop feed the hook facing it right goes through around the hook down through it and then back up top pull tight okay now let's uh for the sake like i said for the sake of this we're going to make just a single hook but uh, you would typically do two hooks so this is what you look like with no sinker okay you have the bottom ready for the sinker the hook there would be another one above it now you tie a swivel up at the top here and uh, I'm using the same knot I was using before. Um, like I said, you can use a uni knot, palmer knot, whatever knot you're comfortable with using. Um, this is just the one I prefer to use, the improved clinch knot. I couldn't think of it earlier. It's the improved clinch knot. So we'll tie that on. Snip that. So that is where that is going. Main line ties the swivel. You would have two hooks, like I said, um, but for the sake of video time, I don't want to bore you guys to death. Here's your second hook. Sinker goes on the bottom. We'll just use this egg sinker, for example. And the same, just like how you put that hook on, we're gonna do the same thing with the, the sinker. All right, pinch it tight, through the loop, back down through it, and pull tight, tighter. You want that line to be line-to-line -line contact, just like that. Okay, so there you go. I mean, like I said, there would normally be another one up here, but for the sake of time, we're going to just do the one. And yeah, that is it. Now, there are a couple things you can do to add to this. Um, I have like here, these are rattlers. If you're fishing in an area with current, you can just slip this on. Let me just do it real quick and show you guys what I'm talking about. Super easy to use. Um, also beads, glass beads that like glow in the dark. Also a great addition to this. I don't know if this will go through because this is tighter. Um, try it though. Oh yeah, it will. Alright, so there you have a rattle, which if you're fishing in current, spins, creates vibration in the water, has glass rattles on the inside, real loud, obnoxious. Good in the summertime, um, when these fish are irritable. But uh, yeah, that is my double, well right now single hook rig, but would be a double hook rig. Now like I said, there are a couple downsides to this bait. One is since it's, since it's such a long rig, it does take away some casting ability. Um, so, you know, normally with like your Carolina rig, you can typically launch that bait like as far as you can. Um, and you're not gonna have any issues. You know, that it's a pretty aerodynamic rig. This one isn't, um, especially once you get heavier weights. You know, it, it likes to, these, where your hooks go, a lot of times will helicopter and spin with, with your swivel. It'll spin in the air. See how it does that? It'll do that while it's flying and it just slows it down. So you may not be able to cast it as far, but what I really enjoy about this rig is double the baits, double the scent. Now you're, you're typically not looking to catch two fish at the same time. It has happened to me this year though. Um, I think not my most recent video, but maybe two videos ago. I can't remember. Um, yeah, caught two with on, on this rig. Um, shocking. Never had that happen before. Really surprised. But I like it because you can double your bait, double the scent. And let's say you have you're in an area where you know, let's say you like using cut shad, and you have you like using cut bluegill, but you're in between which to use, which one's going to work better. Well, guess what? You can double them up. You can put shad on the bottom, bluegill on top, vice versa see which bait is working better, then you can put both on the same rig, right? So um, it's a good tester rig, I feel like. You know, if you wanna try a couple different baits or you have one bait that you're unsure will work and you wanna try it out, this is a great way to do it. So that being said, great rig. It does have a little bit of a downside, but um, it's, a, it's a fun one to use. You know, once you're in tune with the Carolina rig and you wanna start mixing it up, um, it can be a lot of fun to use. So would recommend it. 
Okay, so that is the video. Um, I hope this was beneficial to you in, in some way, um, whether you're new to it and you're, you're, you know, you're wanting to learn rigs, or let's say you're a seasoned cat fisherman and maybe you've never heard of the double hook rig or never used it or saw something new. I don't know, whatever it may be. Uh, I hope this did benefit you. If it did, or if, if you're, you have suggestions, anything like that, please drop them in the comments below. Would love to hear that. Uh, catfishing is a sport where I feel like a lot of people know the drill. They think they know what to do. You know, you can just go out and throw a hook on your line and drown a worm and catch catfish. Well, sure you can, but if you want to be more successful in numbers and size of fish, I think you need to start bumping up your quality of rigs. Uh, rods and reels are also important, um, but I, the rig is your bread and butter. If you don't have a good rig set up, uh, you know, you have, if you have no good hookup rates, then it doesn't matter what kind of rod you really have. So you want to make sure you're very seasoned in that and you know what you're doing. So uh, with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, if this was helpful to you, uh, give this video a thumbs up and think about subscribing. I, I do catfish quite a bit throughout the year and uh, I would like to make more videos such as this to help you guys out. So again, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.